Uh, there's apparently three parts of this. I don't think I'm going to watch all three. I, I, I just have been sent this a million times. And I think if I don't watch it, they're just going to keep sending it to me. I'm not super into the technical side of Star Citizen personally. And um, it just isn't that important to me. I think the game and, and, and the game working is all that's important to me. And I guess that's a part of it. I don't see this being incredibly exciting, but it's a 10 minute video. If I don't pause a lot, uh, I think we'll we'll hear what he has to say and and see if there's any you know value to a star citizen player that a network engineer can provide. Um, but I will leave a caveat here is anytime I've watched a video on a expert in their field uh, talking about um, star citizen features, uh, specifically like database people or uh, network people and things like that, I often get messages from devs saying, yeah, this person doesn't really understand how it works for us uh, so that they're not really, um, you know, they may be an expert in what they're doing, but it seems to be quite different than uh, what CIG is doing. But regardless, let's see what we got here. Uh, this is from Tybio's Twisted World. Uh, apparently a pretty new content creator. Um, so we'll link that there and uh, we'll check it out. I recently watched the Star Citizen panels about server meshing from last fall. And I've been a backer since 2012. However, oh, okay. after seeing the replication layer and the server meshing demo, I really was quite shocked. Let me give you a little bit of background as to who I am and why I'm making this video. I've been in networking for 30 years. I got my first job in network operations. Cool, cool. And and yes, to, for him to say that he was shocked is, um, I do think a lot of people, when they saw that, that were in the field, were pretty impressed uh, by what they were able to show. 1994, I've been working ever since in operations, engineering, architecture. And for the last 12 years, I've been working in automation and software control of networks. Why this is interesting to me is because I have seen a lot of talk about replication layer and about server meshing, I started watching some of the videos. I saw one reaction from a software engineer that was really good. I think there's an aspect of this that has not been getting the coverage it deserves. So okay. what I'd like to do today is spend just a few minutes. I'm not going to take a whole ton of your time, but I'd like to discuss the complexities and intricacies that come from the networking side of the house with this. So to begin that, we need to understand that graph. I hope he dumbs it down to my level, but it sounds like he's not going to. Theory is the core of networking. Now, graph theory is very straightforward. You have nodes, which are points in space, and then you have edges of those connect to nodes. Graph theory is entirely about relationships. So when I was watching this, I had a slightly different take on what we need to keep an eye on moving forward. If we take a very simple graph, and we'll use this for our example today, there are Balloons. two ways that a graph can be built. The first way is a tree. In this case, a left to right view where there's a hierarchy of membership. This is what you saw on the screen in the demonstration. This is a representation of a graph of a simple network. There are ways to progress in this graph where you can actually loop endlessly. In a tree, you don't have that option. So with those two bits of knowledge, let's take this a step further. If your ship lands on a planet, you move from the orbit of Microtech to the Microtech city node, and then eventually down to the Microtech spaceport node. And even then you go into your hang. And this is all the entity graph stuff, I'm node. assuming. And each one of those transition requires changing a vertice in their graph. There are a couple of things that must be maintained for a graph to work effectively. Number one, in this case, it seems that it has to be hierarchical, it has to be a tree. Actually, it has to be multiple trees. You want Microtech to be a tree under Stanton 
and then you want pyro one to be a tree under pyro and effectively a jump gate is a way to hand node trees between those two graph and that's where my concern lies with where we're going with star citizen oh, yeah, it's concern. not about the function of changing the edges moving them around. I think that's obviously incredibly complex and has never been done in the scale that would be needed for an online game like this, especially one where you're trying to do like FPS across the boundary, right? There's a reason there are loading screens and this is it. The second piece is what happens at Jump Town? What happens when there's an event or a major battle? You eventually get to a point where the graph becomes indivisible in a meaningful way. If you take 10 ships and they all have multiple rooms and tons of weapons, even if you take each ship and okay. give it, let's call it 20 internal zones, right? Each room is its own zone. You are in those individual zones reducing the computational complexity. However, at some point, all of that replication and that splitting ends up costing you more than you're gaining because you have to transmit that information, sync that information, and eventually get that information to the end consumer, the player, the edge node, in a way that the player can understand it. And ah, okay. Interesting. I, I'm, I'm understanding this a little bit now. And just in case you guys aren't, the. The idea that, that CIG has gone with is splitting us up into as many of these, like, nodes as possible, and that eventually, if you have too many, the syncing of them and the communication of them to all the clients and all the, the server and everything could get so complicated that things seem to fall apart. Is that essentially what we deal with today, uh, with a lot of the problems that we have, desync, all that stuff? And Probably. in a way that I can, you know, change my shields before my ship blows up. So there is a finite ability to spread this out. The question is not what is the ability to spread it out? Really, the question is what is the ability to group it together? In yeah, my MMO traf experience, camps, right? servers don't have issues when players are well distributed across their zones. I don't know if any of you remember, but way back in the day, there was the big Scarab event in WoW, where there was this huge event in one zone, and it totally blew up the servers for a little <laughs> while. They got yep. working eventually. But the challenge they had to balance was total server population versus the percentage of that population that m might be expected to congregate in one area. SIG will be able to divide that tremendously more than WoW could at the time. No okay. question about it. What we should be focusing on is the group, the coordination between all of those different... I'm confused. Is server meshing just basically one big server for everybody? I think it's the attempt to make it seem like it's one big server for everybody when it's not. Right. It's a number of servers that are all communicating and sharing information amongst each other, um, but it will appear like we're all in one place together. But there's definitely times where you could be at this station and I could be at this station, and I would imagine that we wouldn't see each other potentially if this was a super popular place. Um, yeah, and the other aspect of it is their goal is to have it feel seamless. Um, we'll see if it is. I mean, if jumping between, you know, huge distances uh, in order to make that work is seamless, then sure. But um, I don't think that that's really feels super seamless because I think we do feel and I think we will always feel that that little hiccup when leaving a big area and joining a big area like a moon or a planet. But we'll see. zones, all those different levels of the tree needs to happen somewhere yeah, and in order to, to do that can you have go to across servers. simplify the problem as you go up the stack which is a whole nother subject to talk about it's this abstraction right from the very detailed i took a step in the room this way which no one else cares about to i push the self-destruct button which everyone else cares about so there's there's a level of abstraction that goes on conclusion okay I have questions 
about this because I think from what I'm seeing, they're going to be able to get further along the line than anyone has. And I'm curious to see what the end state is because this is not a simple problem. Really just boils down to two things. When we're testing, what we need to, to help the engineering team understand is, first of all, the obvious one. When does the tree break? I moved from X to Y and I hung. I saw a 30K, right? Yeah, but do you know if you're the one who caused the 30K? I think that's one of the, the toughest issues with helping them test. Like his, his mentality here is how to help them out. And I'm not sure how to sometimes. Very difficult because you don't know if you're the one causing the, the crash or the, the client crash or whatever, right? Um, they just kind of happen to you and you don't know if you're the one who's doing it. Effectively, that modification to the graph didn't complete properly. That's an obvious one. But the other one to keep our eye on here is when do we as the end players start to feel the impact of clumping together? I really think that one of the best things we can do as a community is all these massive organizations that are out there when we start testing the replication layer and eventually the server meshing, just have a have an org meeting, right? Get as many people as you can on one shard and get as many people as you can in one area because we need to help them stress this out. Not in a combative way. Interesting. Um, I know that we didn't have the crash recovery going on, um, but during a replication layer test, that's what our server did. We had the entire server. Uh, at one location, we were at um, Brio's Breaker Yard on Daymar. And not only were we all at one location, but there were ferries sending us to and from Seraphim Station, which is where he is now, to bring more and more ships there. Right? But the problem is, is it was just a 100-player server. So, um, I'm... It, it, we had no issues uh, tracking a player in order, like there were no players uh, teleporting all over the place. And yeah, so it's kind of hard to get like Void Dude saying you have 500 people in one location when you don't have 500 people in the server. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of, but that's what we did. And I don't know if we helped them or not, but there didn't seem to be too many issues. The, the server gradually degraded. Not sure why it just felt like any other server experience in my in my experience, but we all just kind of hung out there. We're running around, shooting, grabbing ships, just hanging out, talking, and eventually the server crashed. But nobody knows why or why it degraded. Boy, this is us trying to understand at the same time they're trying to understand. So none of this should be taken as me saying they're gonna fail. They're horrible. I can't even really comprehend the work they're doing. It's so amazing to me. We just need to find ways as a community that we can partake in this and not just passively sit back and complain that it isn't moving quick enough. This do, do we need to find, do we as a community need to find a way how to help or do they as a, uh, the networking team need to lay out some, some tasks or some, some goals that we can help out them with. I know, um, you know, it's it's at a, on a much simpler scale, but the a lot of the devs from, let's say, the mission team, like Elliot, is one of them here. Um, he'll he'll just come in the chat and say, "Hey, do you mind trying this for me? I want to see what happens." And no matter what I'm doing, you stop. I always stop what I'm doing, and I do the best I can to help him and find that issue right. And at least have him see what it's like for me to experience it so they can hopefully resolve whatever that issue is, right? I think that that's one of the more important things is to lay it out there and uh, communicate that as clearly and openly and everywhere as possible from their end to say, hello, this is what we need you to do. And uh, that's it. 
You know? Does the most ambitious private sector change in the way we operate as a community I've ever seen? Think of this like the metaverse, only not stupid. The, the concept here that they are building towards is not just... Uh, and then Elliot says, there are two things you guys are super useful at helping us find issues when asked and also causing so much chaos that it causes unique issues we've not seen before. True. Like... Uh, I, I just think of examples of like some of the stuff that Lars made, uh, um, salvage mission wise, right? The salvage missions were initially created with hull scraping in mind. And then 15 other things have happened since then. And they've all completely broken. And we just go in there and start SRV moving them around. And it's like, okay, I've just moved a mission marker when a mission marker has never been moved by a player ever in the past, you know, just silly things like that. On the networking side, though, the only thing that they've ever, like, accidentally communicated to us, and this isn't even on the networking side. This is more on just, like, server performance. Uh, remember when they demoed the original, like, the first showing of uh, structural salvage, how they, in order to take the server's uh, FPS down, that they just spawned in stations everywhere, uh, which is essentially replicating players' traveling around the universe where us as players on the networking side all in one location can cause a lot of issues but on the server side uh and maybe that's server networking i'm not really sure when we spread out it causes a lot of server issues right so that was a uh, like one way that they've told us how to break their servers is, is actually spread out instead of um all be together a space mmo if they get this right then down the road, they can sell Blizzard a solar system. And Azeroth can be there with its own rules, its own code, its own capabilities. Because in the graph structure, that brand... Could you sell something in one engine to somebody else in another? Branch is managed, well, now by Microsoft, but you get my point, right? Yes, this is a space simulation, but yes. what they're building okay. is so much more. I cannot even put it into words. The, the cross-pollination that this is going to have that'll ripple across the industry will be quite profound. Even is it, is it something like, um, like almost like a patent, like they've created this new type of server architecture thing? No, it's been 12 years since I first contributed. And yes, they have made no end of mistakes. I am not trying to be an apologist. But at this point, they have rebuilt my level of confidence in their work. And they've shown their work enough that I think they are on to something massive. I see so many people in this community go, oh, just get a bigger switch or, well, maybe they should upgrade to 10 gig. And as a networking person, just stop. Just stop that. This level of problem they're trying to solve has baffled Who since that? the enlightenment. This is not simple stuff they're doing. Frankly, I can't believe they have the guts to try it. So please don't minimize what they're trying to do. All right, that's enough for this. This is my first video. You know, I know it's a mess. I will get back. I don't think it was a mess at all. I think the video was great. I heard he did a, a couple other versions of it. Um, yeah, I think what a lot of people say is just like buy more servers or something. The, uh, the, my understanding of that always has been that there is one actual physical hardware server but our servers are actual like virtual machines. So the more you, like it doesn't really matter because that physical one will be um, overpowered by the number of virtual machines or whatever that are running or whatever. But yeah, felt like he's been making videos for it. The guy has an SM7B on his first video, by the way, which are, which is kind of crazy. But the, um, the, the thing that I'm recognizing here that all he's saying is, is um, seeing the server meshing demo has renewed his confidence. He has experience in the networking field, but this stuff is way over his head, even though it doesn't sound like it. And um, yeah, he's just curious to see where they go. But uh, yeah, let's just kind of see what happens. 
SM7B is like a super fancy, expensive, uh, like studio microphone. It's like, yeah, it's usually not your first microphone. That's that's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, it it is like the uh, gold standard of mics for voiceover and talking or like radio and stuff. It's the yeah, it's the all black microphone that kind of looks like this. So yeah, but anyway, the I thought the video was really good. Uh, I think he's made a couple other videos. I'm not so much into the technical side of things, so I don't know if I'll I'll take a look at those or not. But I think this was really interesting, and I largely agree with them. It's just we got to help them work out all the kinks, just like we did. I don't know. It seems like his confidence is renewed. I don't know how he felt during three eighteen and the whole um uh whatever it's called the persistence issues that we had uh but that we really need to help them as much as we can find all the edge cases and clean up things as much as possible cuz i think this year is going to be heavy on a lot of these huge technical things coming into the game and and we'll see um but yeah pretty cool video and and i i appreciate it so let me link it to you guys again since it was his first it, it did very very well because any video coming from an an expert in their field being positive about star citizen always does uh so mike is back to testing star citizen i thought we had moved over to playing star citizen well i typically don't care to test uh, like the patch for them uh, anymore because I think that they've pushed the patches out way too often to sell ships instead of deliver a good experience to their backers. Um, but when it comes to things like server meshing, replication layer, and all that stuff, I think that is absolutely uh, really the only time uh, that I, I would be willing to test outside of a, a dev coming into the chat and being like, hey, can you check this out for me real quick? Um, I used to do quite a bit of testing on my own and then communicate to some of the devs or make um, the issue council posts on like, hey, this issue is really bad. And uh, the most recent example was, I think it was 320. Uh, do you guys remember the sound bug where it would just like loop like crazy and be like super annoying? Um, that went into a live patch. Yeah, that went into a live patch because they wanted to release the servers quickly, uh, release the patch quickly to sell a ship. And it's something that I communicated to them knowing that they were planning on releasing because uh, they like you know made some posts uh, about that on, on Spectrum. And it was like, you can't release this patch. Like, this is a horrible experience. And they did it anyway. Uh, so that was when I was like, yeah, you're undermining any of the help that this community is trying to do for you. And... It was really frustrating, but this is everything. If we don't get this right, the game is dead kind of thing. If they screw up one patch and there's a sound bug in it, then it's whatever. But this in particular, the server meshing thing, if we don't help them with that, I don't, I don't think we have a game. So... You might as well try to help them in, in any way you can uh, a little bit. Not that it's our, our job to, but it's just in my, my personal opinion, I want to. I'm not telling you that you have to, because um, that's sort of what his video is doing, is sort of telling you that you have to. I'm not telling you you have to. Um, I'm just telling you that I want to uh, when this stuff comes. And then, you know, the other devs that I think are pretty cool, I'll do whatever I can to help them as well. That's about it, you know, and we'll see.